G'day everyone, this is the fourth and final installment of the build series of the 112th scale Honda from Tamiya. It covers the final fit out, attaching all the previously built items like the engine and wheels, plus the build up of the suspension and exhaust system, plus some extra bits that are not included in the kit. This is where we left off in part three with the body painted, deckled and cleared. If you want to see the earlier preparation steps and construction of the engine and chassis, go have a look at the previous videos, which are linked in the description below. So next thing was to get the front suspension and the steering in this thing. Here we've got the bulkhead has been glued in place and that was a bit of a tricky thing because the two rocker arms need to be lined up with the holes in the bulkhead and also to clip in the top of the spring shock absorber unit which is sitting vertically in the chassis. And then once that was done the steering rack which is the black bit at the top here uh, can be fitted in as well as the steering column which is metal with a, a metal gear cog on the end of it. The lower A arms just clip into the chassis and are basically free floating to move up and down with the suspension. Steering wheel was painted silver and then I masked the inside bit off and sprayed the rest of it semi-gloss black and this is how it came up after the masking was removed and Honda logo decal applied in the middle. The steering column's metal and the boss of the steering wheel's plastic so I just used a bit of CA glue to stick that on. There was then this aluminium coloured tank structure glued to the front bulkhead and then the radiator fixed to that with a couple of supports. Underneath the car there's a bunch of cooling pipes that run between the radiator and the engine. They glue into the floor of the car and attach to the bottom of the tank with some rubber hose. It's a very tight fit under the nose of the car. The piping that is provided in the kit doesn't actually fit. There's a sort of a flange on the edges that has to be cut down to make enough room for them to fit across in the channel that's uh, recessed into the bottom of the car. Now I've left these plated. I don't know how realistic this is because I have not seen any photographs of underneath the car, but I ended up, once they glued in, just used a whole bunch of wash over it to sort of dull it down. This is the rear suspension and most of the parts here are actually reversible. You can put them on either the left or the right hand side, except Except for the uprights which are the, the black pieces they are unique to the left and the right hand sides so really important not to get those mixed up. I painted the uprights a bit of a mixture of semi-gloss black with a few drops of light gunmetal just to give it a bit of a metallic finish to it. Fitting the rear suspension is really quick and easy because it all just uh, clips into place. The only thing that needed glue were the mounts for the trailing arms, uh, basically the chassis pickups, and they just get glued onto the surface of the body. Now, uh, they don't bear any significant load in the build, so I just used some crystal clear uh, between the fitting and the body just so that it didn't damage the paint. It's a big engine, but it drops in with ample clearance. You just need to get the angle right, and uh, there's a pin on the front of the engine that slides into a hole on the bulkhead. There's not really any cement required to hold the engine in place. There's a bracing that goes across between the two shock absorber towers at the rear of the car above the gearbox, and that holds it all in place. The wheels and tyres were put together in the previous video, but I didn't mark up the lettering, so I got out the uh, flat white Tamiya LP4 and very carefully with a really fine brush went around and individually painted the letters that are cast into the tyre. Now I've only done the outside logos, I haven't bothered with the ones on the inside of the tyres because this is just time consuming and frustrating and sends you cross-eyed. And there's a few little marks where I've gone over, I just cleaned those up with a hobby knife afterwards. This is the front upright and steering arm, which is held to the wheel with a small axle which has then been covered over by that black cap so the wheels do rotate on here. The front uprights have got a uh, basic half brake caliper cast into them which I've just uh, painted in titanium colour and then put a bit of wash on it. The caliper detail is very bad because um, there's only half the caliper. The other half that goes on the other half side of the disc it just doesn't exist so if someone makes 3D calipers for this thing you could certainly lift the, uh, the realism. Front and rear suspensions are done. At the rear, the drive shafts have now been fitted and the anti-roll bar and the linkages to connect to that. And that is a working anti-roll bar. It moves up and down as the car rises and falls on the suspension. But basically here, just ready for the wheels to go on, which doesn't take long at all. And then we've got a race car sitting on its own springs. All four wheels turn on this car. The steering is poseable. The drive shafts at the rear, the universal joints are all working. This is a very old kit from Tamiya and the sprue that all of the exhaust parts was on uh, had really big seam marks in it and also a bit of flash which is unusual for a Tamiya kit. 
But what it meant was that there was a lot of cleaning up to do with all of the exhaust pieces. And uh, this, this is one of the rear tailpipes and a really heavy seam mark. So uh, scraping and sanding this down brought them up not too bad. Certainly acceptable for this build. There is a tangle of 12 header pipes that go into the V of this engine and each one of those 12 pipes is unique. So what I do is mark up a piece of foam with all of the part numbers and then attach each piece to its own little alligator clip and put them in that as a template. So, so basically I know which part I'm working on, whether it be cleaning it up or painting or what have you. All the exhaust parts were then primed with white primer and then some flat white over the, the top of that. Uh, in hindsight, maybe it should have been primed in gray because they look a bit, it's gonna sound a bit weird, but they look a bit translucent. The exhaust exit of the main pipes, uh, I painted inside them semi-gloss black and then just gave them a very light dusting of flat black just to represent some exhaust soot on the very tip. Putting all of the exhaust pieces together is a little bit of an act of blind faith because uh, there's no attachment points for all 12 of those header pipes. So when they connect into the collector, um, you're just going by the instructions and hoping that they're all going to sort of line up when it comes time to assemble, which thankfully they did. So once they were all painted and assembled, it was time to fit them to the model and uh, doing some test fitting, I found that putting the two inner pipes in first and then the two lots to go on the outside and sort of over the top uh, as, the, as the second lot. The windscreen is a clear piece and there's a small deflector that also has to be attached on the front of that so I've just used a little bit of crystal clear just to stick that on because that will dry clear and not uh, not melt the plastic which is what um, to me cement does. There was one or two little scratches in the windscreen but it's a really thin plastic part and I was worried that if I tried to sand and polish the scratch out I'd end up snapping the piece so I've basically just left it as it come from the kit with the exception I had to drill out the holes to accept the rear vision mirrors they needed to be opened up a little bit and these little pins are used to secure the windscreen to the car and there's been a molding issue with these because it looks like the heads are all offset to the pin and as you can see these are only about a millimeter wide all the alignment issues as a result of a mistake I made in a previous step, uh, the cockpit is not the correct shape and the windscreen therefore doesn't fit snugly over it. So these pins I had to mount the windscreen and basically use uh, crystal clear to glue a pin and the windscreen down and, and basically brace it there until the glue had set enough to hold it in place and then move on to the next pin and repeat the process. Get it lined up, glue it, hold it, wait for it to go off and then move on to the next one. And there's six pins to go around the cockpit one by one to basically tie down that clear piece. In the end, it's all settled down not too bad, but the whole structure is under a bit of tension. So who knows when it's going to go twang and pop out of shape. Uh, rear view mirrors, the mounting pin on them was excessively long. So I just cut that back and again, just used crystal clear to glue it into the clear piece for the windscreen. The model includes an overflow tank and oil cooler that mount behind the rollover bar, but does not include any instruction or materials for how to plumb those into the car. So I decided to use some leftover tubing and put some solder inside it so that it would hold its shape uh, to have a pipe coming out of the tank. And for the cooler, I cut the mounting tabs off, drilled some holes instead, and then poked some wires and uh, some solder in to at least have something running up into and out of the cooler. So this is the back end of the model after it's completed. And you can see with the exhaust, just very subtle soot on the exit tips. And also where the headers all go into the collectors, there's a bit of a tone difference there as well, just to sort of uh, accentuate the different parts that make up that whole system. Now the model can be displayed with the nose on or off as well as that top ducting and panel on top of the cockpit. Despite the chassis being out of square, we've sort of mostly recovered it. I mean, if you look hard, there is a little bit of misalignment of the nose cone and that top panel. Um, and even the wheelbase, I guess, is a millimeter shorter down one side than the other. So in conclusion, yeah, there were a few frustrations in the build of this model as you would have seen in the previous videos. But when you get to finish it, there is that sense of satisfaction. And in retrospect, you think, oh, well, maybe it wasn't so bad after all. Uh, as I've pointed out through this, there's a lot of detail that's missing from this kit that you'd normally would see in the modern Tamiya Formula One kits, but it is a very old kit. It's the very first 12th scale Formula One that Tamiya did. But overall, you know, you follow the instructions, you're going to get a decent build out of it. It does look like a 1966 Formula One Honda. This Honda is actually the second 12th scale Formula One build that I've done. The first one was the Yardley McLaren M23. 
also a Tamiya kit. I did that as a kid and it's a bit of a mess, but it's actually potentially a really good restoration project. So maybe I'll do a video on that someday. If you've watched this far, you must be interested in the content. So go check out the website wixie500.com where there's a lot more content and detail. In the meantime though, I better get on with some other builds. So until next time, cheers.